everyone for your presence over here. And first of all, I'd like to thank our Almighty God who has given me this privilege to share from His Lord and also all the NPTS family members. Okay. And in this very morning, would you like to turn with me the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19? Chapter 19 from verse from 28 to 40. Here is written like this. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethphage and Bethany, at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you. And as you were enter it, as you enter it, you will find a call tied here, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Tell him. Tell him the Lord needs it. Verse 32. Those who are sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the call, his owners asked them, Why are you untying the cord? They replied, The Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw cords on the cord and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread the cords on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices. For all the miracles they had seen. Verse 13 is Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in high, peace in heaven, and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. Verse 14 I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Amen. May God bless you from the scripture reading and let's have a prayer. Lord, we thank you and praise you for this very morning. Just we come before you and just we submit ourselves unto thy grace of throne. Thank you for everything that you have done in our life, Lord Jesus. And thank you for this very beautiful morning and bright morning, Lord. And teach us through your words. Lord, in this very body, just speak to me and enable me to speak in such a way that we could be blessed by your words and we may be able to apply your words in our daily life of Jesus. And help me to speak and teach me and what to speak, Lord. And thank you for everything and this time just I submit my name in Jesus' name. Amen. This is the day of acclamation and the proclamation. Amen? Amen. We would like to repeat. This is the day of acclamation and proclamation. This is the day of acclamation and proclamation. And this is the day of acclamation and proclamation. Do not shut up your mouth or do not shut up or be muted. Do not be silent. This is the day of acclamation and the proclamation. When we see in this passage, in this very selective passage, we'll find the, the, the procession of Jesus Christ, the triumphal procession of Jesus Christ in New Jerusalem. On Sunday morning, he starts his journey from Beth Bethany. And at Bethany, he arrives 
on Friday. And before he was at Bethany, he was completely busy in the ministry. And he had encountered many different people. And like he was in Pyria, other side of border, other side of Judea. And from there he, he starts his journey on Thursday. And he enters along the road of Jericho. And at Friday, on Friday evening he arrives on at Bethany. And then here he stays at the house of Mary Martha and Lazarus. And where he had a dinner and then he was anointed by Mary. And very, very early in the morning or on Sunday morning, just he starts his journey from Bethany to Jerusalem. When he reaches, when he approaches near the near at Bethphage from Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples to bring the donkey that he wanted to ride. And then he sends it his two disciples to bring it back and which was never ridden by anybody. And when they bring back and then Jesus he sits on it and he starts his journey into Jerusalem. When he enters into Jerusalem a huge crowd, the large crowd comes and sings the Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. They sing some of the portion from Psalm 118. And they sing, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. And they claim, they claim, and they make, they, they make sound in a such a way that like the city was like trembling. It was like shaking. And like people were, some of the people were astonished by seeing that crowd and that, that sound, that sound of that, that sound of acclamation and the proclamation. And when we see in the Matthew, the gospel of Matthew, like we find that some of like whole city moved. And some of the people they asked, Who is this man? Who is this man? And the crowd replies, This is Jesus, the prophet who is from Galilee. So, this sounded in such a way that the she was like a trembling, like shaking. And some of the Jewish leaders, they asked. And they asked and they requested Jesus to rebuke his disciples and the crowd. Because they were curious. They were afraid. And also they were annoyed by this movement. And they told Jesus to how this crowd. But Jesus' reply was completely opposite to their request. His reply was intensely different. And Jesus told, if they keep quiet, the storm will cry out. The storm will shout or cheer off. Or the storm will acclaim and declare the majesty of Jesus, the King. So my friends, this is the day of acclamation and the proclamation. Acclamation, 
which means a loud sound. Like and like like and other like demonstration of welcome is it's also kind of cheering up and praising. And the declaration or proclamation, which means like it's, it's like official or uh, public statement. Like for example, if some if somebody is supposed to be in a position before that one, before he holds the positions that he will be declared that this person holds these positions, that's kind of proclamations or declaration. So here we find that crowd they made the, the sound of acclamation and a proclamation that Jesus is the king. They, they made the sound of acclamation. It means that they praise God. They praise God. They honor God. For the things that they have, that God has done in their life. Because they have seen many miracles. And many wonders. And the tremendous deeds that God has done through Jesus Christ in their life. So they were like so they were in a such a way that even nothing could stop them. So they made the sound of acclamation. They praise God, they honor God, they admire God, they adore God for everything that God has done through their life, through Jesus Christ. And are you ready to acclaim God? Are you ready to praise God in this morning? Yes, we should be ready. Because God has done many, many things in our life. Along with acclamation, people made declaration. Amen? Amen. People made declaration. That means that they made Jesus as their king. They praise God for the tremendous deeds that God has done in their life through Jesus Christ. Now, along with that, along with the sound of acclamation, they made the public declaration Jesus Christ as the king, king of their life, king of their family. King of their nation. Are you ready to make Jesus as the king of your life? As your family? Amen. Yes, we should be. Because Jesus is the blessed king who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So my friends, here we find, we find the people are making the sound of acclamation and the sound and the declaration and the public declaration. And, and we see the movement, the huge movement, the large movement that people follow Jesus Christ. And they praise God and they honor God. And, and there are some of the things may bring confusion in our mind. Why did, why did Jesus choose donkey? Why not horse? Here, when Jesus was entering into Jerusalem, he sent his true disciples to bring the donkey because he wanted to ride the donkey. He could have ridden the horse why he chose donkey? Recently, rise in our mind. Recently, march in our mind. What is the significance of donkey here? Because in the Nepali society, donkey, when 
Somebody is called using the use this word donkey. <laughs> it means that it's one of the least animals in its cat category. It is most hated animals in its category. Why Jesus chose this least animal? He could have chosen he could have chosen horse or some something else. Why he chose donkey, which is very least in its category? It has very profound meaning. It has very significant meaning. Like in, in Eastern tradition, the donkey symbolizes the animal of peace. Donkey symbolizes the animal, animal of peace. Whenever the king used to negotiate with other their other their next other nations he used to ride a donkey and here in the same way Jesus was not the king of war raising okay he is not war raising king Jesus was not entering to bring the conflict in the country Here, the prophecy of Isaiah also fulfills here. Like in Isaiah, Isaiah has prophesied that that one will be coming, will be called the Prince of Peace. So that the Jesus riding on a donkey is to symbolize his arrival in peace. His riding on donkey symbolizes the peace. So that his entry on donkey symbolizes as the prince of peace, not as the war waging king. So my friends, Jesus chooses donkey. It means that he is not he was not bringing, he was not supposed to bring the conflict, but to bring peace. But what we see in the last days, what we see in the revelation, but Jesus will be not coming, Jesus will be not riding the donkey, but he will be riding, riding the horse. But here, but Jesus rides donkey. Because he wanted to demonstrate that he is the prince of peace, not the war waging prince. So, even this, this verse, even this statement has parallel with Zachariah. Chapter 9, verse 9. And Zachariah also prophesies that rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion, shout, daughter of Jerusalem, see, your king comes to, right, to you righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the fall of a donkey. So that it's also put in enough. The prophecy that Zachariah had, had prophesied. Simon generously, even like people, people just came with the branches of palm. They came with palm branches. It also has profound meaning. It also has significant meaning. The palm, the, 
the branches of palm, it also symbolizes the victory, triumph, peace, and goodness in the, in the Mediterranean world, or Near East world, Near, Near East. It also, the palm branches also symbolizes the victory, triumph, peace, and goodness. Even it also depicted, it was the palm used to be inscribed in the coins. Even they used to make the picture of palm in their building. Even when Solomon he built it, when he built the house, or when he built the house, he also inscribed the palm in his building. It means that it symbolizes the goodness and the peace. In a in a Greek society, in ancient Greek, Greek Greece or Greek, a palm branch was awarded to victorious athletes. And a palm also it also personifies personifies the attributes of victory. So that when Jesus was in Jerusalem, people came with palm branches. It means that Jesus, it means that Jesus, Jesus was like, he was winning. And like, he, like, it means that he has won. In the last days, when we see in Psalm 7, verse 9, the people from every nation, every tribe, every language will be coming. They will be standing before the throne of God. And before, in front of the Lamb, in front of the Jesus, they will be standing with palm branches. They will be singing, salvation is belongs to God, who sits upon the throne. Praise and glory and honor belongs to God. The huge multitude will be standing before God and they will be singing the triumph song in the last days. So that the palm branch symbolizes the victory, and also the peace. The whole nations will be standing before God singing the triumph song in the last days. Today now, the palm or palm branch in Christianity symbolizes or associated with the Jesus triumphal entry into Jerusalem. So my friends, what is the significance of observing this day? What's the significance of observing this Palm Sunday? Because it's the day of acclamation and the proclamation. Amen? Amen. Because people made the, made the sound of acclamation. They praise God. On this day, they praise God. For everything that God has done in their life. And also they made the public declaration. Jesus is the king. So that the significance of observing this day is to acclaim God, praise God, and to declare Jesus is the king. And who comes in the name of the Lord. So my dear, dear friends, Let's acclaim God. Let's praise God for His tremendous deeds and goodness. And let's enjoy ourselves with great amusement. Let's declare Jesus as the King, the King of our life, Amen. and the King of our family and the nation, trusting and honoring Him. Let's make music and 
and the Lord wishes for the glory of God. And they welcome Jesus with a great honor and praise. The crowd welcomed Jesus with great honor, with a sort of acclamation. Now is our time to honor him and serve for him. If we do not magnify him, if we do not praise him, God can use anything for his glory. When some of the Jews, uh, Jews leaders came to Jesus and they told Jesus to rebuke the crowd and disciples and Jesus told if they don't shout, if they don't acclaim, if they don't praise God, the stone will be cry out for the glory of God. So my friends, if we do not praise God, if we do not acclaim God and declare Jesus is our king. He will use anything else. He can use anything else. Even the least in the category for his acclamation and declaration. My friends, let's do it. Let's do it. And let's not shut up our mouth. And let's do it together with a great amusement to celebrate this very historical day. And let's make the sound of acclamation. Let's blend our voices in the triumph song. Let's praise God. Let's praise God. And may God bless you all. And thank you. And happy Palm Sunday. And happy New Year. Thank you.